Hey, my name is Dave. Welcome to Horsepower Hill Rotary Works, where we uh, we put rotary engines into inappropriate things uh, and try to make things go fast. Um, today's project, or rather, this is going to be longer than one day project. Um, documenting uh, putting a Ford 8.8 .8, uh, independent rear suspension pumpkin in a second gen RX-7, like that one over there. Uh, why would you want to do this? Uh, number one, if, if you're making a lot of power, so if you've put a V8 or you're running a big boost with the rotary engine, um, you know, the Ford 8.8 .8 is going to be a lot stronger for you. Um, they're also pretty cheap. Uh, I got mine for $300 shipped. Uh, and also, there's a lot of really good uh, gear sizes and limited slip differentials that aren't going to cost you an arm and a leg. So in this case, I was looking for a set of 514s for my RX-7 uh, because I'm not making big power, uh, so I'm trying to make up for that with gearing. Um, and then uh, we are getting a an Eaton Detroit True Track popped in here as well. Uh, so Ronin, Ronin Speedworks is one that makes the mounting kit that actually fits this thing up into the car, uh, but there's still some significant work that goes along with it, as you might imagine. So we're going to walk through that process together, because uh, I haven't seen a good video that sort of documents it, and there's a lot of threads with half a million posts in them, and it's uh, a lot of work to go through 900 pages of threads reading every Tom, Dick, and Harry's uh, input on the swap. So right here is our victim. This is uh, the Ford 8.8 .8, uh, independent rear suspension differential. Uh, this one and the kit as a whole uh, works with the differential that comes out of the Ford Explorer. Uh, I think it's 2002 through 2005, maybe 2006. Um, the key difference is, uh, as you get later in the models, they add another mount over here. Um, some people have tried to make that work anyway, uh, but you're going to end up with a lot more headaches. So, uh, you know, 8.8 .8 IRS, it's got the single front mount on the snout. Um, of course, it was also available in the, the Mercury Mountaineer and whatever else Ford decided to uh, sort of change the name of and the badge of, but still produce the same vehicle. Um, so the first things we need to do with this is we have to cut these ears off. We do not need these. Uh, the the mounting kit uh, will use the existing bolts, which is uh, you know basically the same way as it's currently mounted. Uh, so you're not giving up any strength there. Uh, but these bad boys get in the way of things, um, especially in the case of, you know if you have a more stock car than I do. Um, note that there's a lot missing from the rear end of that car. Uh, if you have the stock fuel tank, these ears will get into that stock fuel tank, so uh, they have to go. Um, so what's the best way of cutting these things off? Well, you could use an angle grinder, or you could, I guess, use a sawzall, or if you have no plans for the weekend, you could just use a hacksaw. Uh, I'm going to be using a Milwaukee uh, portable bandsaw because I just bought it and I'm dying to use it. Okay, so step one of getting into the process of cutting off these ears. Uh, I guess you could do it with the whole pumpkin still assembled. Uh, that seems like it would be pretty damn unwieldy. This is not light. Um, so we're going to remove the cover. Uh, we're going to discover what's inside. Uh, what it should be is a set of 373 gears and whatever uh, Ford had in there for an OEM limited slip differential. Uh, and I believe this one also has the uh, ABS ring installed on the ring gear. All that's going to get junked or sold or, I don't know, maybe turned into uh, a trophy for a racing league. Don't know. Uh, so, we've got a bunch of half inch here. Uh, if you buy one, chances are it's already drained. This one doesn't show any signs of having fluid in it still. Uh, which is great because gear oil stinks like nothing else. So, got two choices. You can uh, you can just use a wrench or smoke them if you got them.
Yeah, there's a bolt down inside each one of these ears too. Another good reason to cut them off and get them out of the way. got a, a vent line here. Uh, some people will swap this off for a more compact vent. Uh, there's a lot of options out there for that. Uh, I'm actually I'm going to put the hose back on later once this thing's mounted in uh, and just run a filter at the end. Uh, that way when I'm on the track or hill climbing if I get some expansion or a little bit of uh, overflow it's gonna have to go all the way up that before it starts making a mess. Because uh, again I can't stand gear oil. It's just nasty crap. Be right back. I have to get my uh, my Jeremy Clarkson tool. Huh? No. Huh? Yes. Try not to do that. Oh, Harbor Freight is great for these. Uh, I wouldn't buy anything else at Harbor Freight or anything that you can't use as a hammer if it breaks. Ta da! So, it got a little bit lighter. So, let's see, what do we have in here? I'm not going to count the teeth, but that does not look like a limited slip differential, which is fine by me because I didn't really need one anyway because I have this guy, which is a limited slip differential. Um, the, uh, the Ford Eaton or not Ford Eaton, the Eaton Detroit True Track uh, comes highly recommended by a lot of road racers. So that's what I've gone with. All right, so there's a cover. Um, that doesn't look too filthy, which is great. Uh, it definitely stinks like gear oil. So I'm gonna continue to whinge about the, uh, the scent of gear oil. So we'll get this uh, Put in a vise so we can hold it still, and then we'll uh, we'll draw our lines as a guide, and then we will hack the hell out of it. All right, so we've got our differential cover uh, mounted up here in the vise. Um, you know, you don't need to kill this thing. Don't go screwing it up by just torquing down on that vise until you crack the casing or something. Uh, as I tell most people, act like you have a brain, or at least pretend. So, since we want to uh, make a sort of a decent looking cut, I'm suggesting a ruler or some kind of straight edge. Uh, these thin metal rulers are great because they're a little flexible, so uh, if you've got a little ridge or something you need to get over, boom. And of course, Sharpies. Is there science to this? No. Or at least not that I'm aware of. Uh, I'm going to be a little bit conservative in where I want to cut and then if I need to trim back more later I'll use uh, a grinder. I mean it's aluminum so it's not really hard metal so I can make adjustments pretty easily. Um, since we're cutting with a straight blade you, know, you want to consider what you might hit. So if you go at too steep of an angle over here you could get into that part, which would make an awful mess, and I guess you could JB weld it shut, but probably better to just avoid that altogether. So, be all right, so we've got, we're mounted up, we've got our line drawn, we've actually given this some thought, so we're sure that if we follow this line straight down through, that we're not going to end up making a massive mess. Now, what do we cut with? We've got options. You could use an angle grinder. Obviously, this has a, a, a grinding uh, blade on it right now, which you wouldn't want to use. You'd want to use a, a cutting blade. 
uh, advantages, uh, I mean, it'll go fast. These things can pound through stuff if you have decent blades on them. Uh, disadvantages, if you buy the cheap blades, uh, some of them can break, and you've probably seen some nightmarish photos online of people with chunks of blades sticking out of their face. Um, another disadvantage, it's really noisy, and uh, third disadvantage is because it will go through material so fast, if you are not paying attention, you can make a mess really fast. Option number two, the king of demolition. Uh, I love a sawzall for a lot of things, but when it comes to making a precise cut, uh, probably not. Um, I do have an, a nice metal blade on there right now because uh, I've been deconstructing part of the back of the RX-7 uh, clearancing for the radiators. Um, I, I don't want to use it on this. You have to really pay attention. You have to actually you know, have a little bit of skill. Um, and I like to take myself out of the equation as often as possible when it comes to screwing up. So, what's our other option, Dave? You can buy one of these badass mama jamas. Um, I just got this one a couple days ago. I've used it to make a couple uh, small cuts on stuff. It's fantastic. Um, it, it makes such a nice, clean cut. It's smooth. It's not very noisy. You can, uh, you've got good grips on it, so you can control it really well. Uh, so that's what I'm gonna roll with. Get this guard back. So you can uh, maybe, maybe not see what I mean about a nice straight cut. Here, I'll grab the camera. So, you know, that's, that's pretty clean. That's not going to require a whole lot of touch-up. Um, and, you know, some people may see this someday, so do it nicely. Um, I'm not going to bother showing you how I cut off the other one, because it's just more buzzing of a saw. Uh, so we'll get back to that and after I finish back. that. So both ears are now cut off. Uh, the next step really doesn't involve this. It's this guy. Um, gonna have to bring this over to uh, Racetech, um, which is uh, run by my buddy uh, Rick Fettis. Uh, really smart guy, fantastic fabricator. Uh, he's going to swap in my new gears and my limited slip. I also got a full rebuild kit with Timken gears. Don't get cheap gears, people. It's not worth cheaping out and getting the Chinese crap. Uh, Timken gears are excellent. Uh, Koyo, also very good. Um, there's probably a couple other brands, but don't cheap out on your gears. You don't want to have to open this up again later just to replace something because you decided to get a $30 uh, bearing the first time. So, uh, bring this over to him tomorrow. Uh, I'll probably spend a little bit of time cleaning this guy up. Uh, we've got a lot of oxidation in here, and uh, I could use something to do while I drink my beer. Uh, so, that's it for this first installment of Ford 8.8 IRS into a second generation RX-7. Uh, I hope you join me for the next one if I decide to make it and whenever I upload it. Have a great day. Quick update. Uh, I just hit this with a stiff wire brush and a little degreaser and then blew it off with compressed air and now uh, I've applied the uh, the Frank's Red Hot Sauce of Horsepower Hill Rotary Works. VHT uh, wheel paint specifically. Gunmetal gray. Uh, we put this stuff on everything. Uh, number one, I really like the color. Number two, it's good for about 250 degrees, which is plenty for most things. Uh, and it seems to be a pretty durable coating, pretty resistant to break dust, solvents, 
uh, brake fluid, stuff like that. So I forgot to note one more modification you need to make to the diff cover before you do all the painting. You'll notice it's all painted already. Uh, you got a nub in here and a nub in here. Uh, these are usually taller, uh, but to get the mounting plate from Ronin to fit nicely across all of this, you have to grind them down. Um, I think you could just make them even. I took mine down a little bit further than even with the original casting. Uh, that takes literally two seconds with a grinder. Uh, again, it's aluminum, so be aware that material is going to go fast. And then on the differential itself, the actual pumpkin, you've got two fins here that have to be uh, removed for clearance. Significantly shorter. They were guarding this guy. Um, I'm pretty sure that's the uh, the sensor for the ABS. And then uh, there's three nubbins on top of here, which I believe are from the original casting process. Uh, these have to be chopped off as well. Um, probably took a little, I don't know, probably a little more than a quarter inch off the top of each one. Um, this is for clearance in the body of the car. So uh, angle grinder is probably the best choice for this. Put on a decent blade. Uh, be aware. Wear your safety squints. And uh, have a good time.